Hello Futurasis and Pre-Med Explorers, this is Milena Garcia, your host for Ross University Checking the Post, a pre-med podcast. This is our mini podcast featuring facts and information about our medical program, insights from current students, and tips from practicing physicians. Each week, this podcast will be broken down in small episodes, focusing on one aspect of our program, also having guests talk about their own experiences as students and as doctors. The Muslim Student Association, also known as MSA, seeks to support the Muslim students and other students of faith attending Ross University. They also aim to provide safe and comfortable spaces of prayer and meditation while bringing awareness to the faith of Islam. My guests today are current students, officers of the MSA, and future doctors, Ro Rahimi and Temer Hanan. Welcome back, future Rossis. Thanks for joining us again. This week, we're going to be highlighting the Muslim Student Association. Let's take a moment to introduce our guests today. Ro, we'll start with you. Hi, future Rossis. My name is Ro. Um, well, my full name is Rashan, but I am a 4X student here at Ross, and I'm actually um, from California, where I went to St. Mary's College of California and uh, majored in biology and philosophy. Um, and I'm currently the president of the Muslim Student Association here at Ross. Mm-hmm. Tamar? Hey, future Rossis. My name is Tamar Hanan. I'm a 5C student. Uh, I started Ross in the fall of 2019, and before that, I got my undergraduate degree um, in human physiology and my master's in international affairs. I'm currently doing uh, virtual learning um, in Frederick, Maryland. Um, Yeah. And so let's start with the definition. What is the MSA, Madam President? (laughs) Thank you. So truly the MSA is comprised of an e-board. which includes myself as the president, a vice president, uh, various other members, a uh, philanthropy chair like Tamara, who's joined us here today. Um, and we're really there to organ- um, make sure that the organization runs smoothly. Um, but really the MSA consists of um, Ross students, staff and faculty who come together to promote the Muslim identity um, in an inclusive and diverse environment. We'd like to include a lot of other um, perspectives, um, beliefs, in terms of the beliefs and faiths, uh, to learn more about Islam, like you said in your intro, uh, you raised awareness for uh, Islam. Um, and in addition to including and involving our USM uh, staff, faculty, um, and the students, we like to reach out to the community as well. Um, and we kind of do that through our um, weekly uh, Jummah prayers. Mm-hmm. In fact, let's talk about that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the spaces of prayer available to the MSA? Yeah, of course. Um, So on campus, we have uh, a dedicated uh, prayer room where we can offer, uh, well, not the early morning one, but uh, the other four or five uh, daily prayers. Um, And that is typically organized by a position that we have um, on island called Student Imam. Um, who coordinates um, the times in which these uh, daily prayers would happen. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, Jummah prayer, um, all the other known as like our Friday prayer, um, our holy day in Islam. Um, the student imam will coordinate with a local imam um, in Barbados to come and give a sermon. Um, so that's a great way that we um, can have everyone, the student organize, everyone that's involved and the student organization and even non-Muslims to come out to uh, the Jummah prayer and uh, to kind of just see what we're about. And then also to bring the local community, local Muslims that are in Barbados to our uh, Jummah prayers. Mm-hmm. Tim, or what kind of community outreach program do you guys host? So one of the first ones mm-hmm. that got started um, was the uh, campaign uh, for domestic violence. Um, and that was followed up uh, by fundraising. So fundraising for that and then fundraising for the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and mind you, I'll be, this is during virtual learning. Uh, so it's quite difficult to put together a social media campaign. Um, and then in addition to those two, we did a um, COVID relief where we were managed to raise around $2,000 uh, mm-hmm. from the Ross community. Um, and that went towards building wells, providing medical kits um, to a starving nation. 
And then recently we did a Uyghur, um, the uh, Muslim minority population in China. Um, we did a awareness campaign on the sort of human rights injustices they've been facing. Um, but in the future, so we um, look to continue this going forward in the future mm -hmm. um, of bringing these uh, certain topics, uh, special topics to uh, the awareness of the community. Mm -hmm. And just to piggyback off of what Tamar was saying, um, I have actually been on the board since my first semester. So it MSA holds a very special place in my heart. And um, I was there and I'm the one who witnessed uh, alongside the other keyboard members that there truly was a disconnect. We had all these resources, but we just didn't know how to allocate them appropriately. So ever since we have instilled this um, role of philanthropy chair, it's really helped to um, form a bridge between us and our resources and those around us mm -hmm. that we could support. Let's talk about, and I, I'm sure the Futurastis would want to know, um, how do the Muslim students at Ross adjust their dietary needs? Oh, of course. Um, so I'm assuming you're, so in regards to the halal food, um, not all Muslims mm -hmm. eat halal food, but for those that do, um, there are plenty of options on the island. Um, if you're living in Coverly, which a lot of students do, mm -hmm. Um, the grocery store Massey's um, will actually sell halal food that's supplied by Amir's Chicken, um, whose actual um, factory and uh, chicken coos are right down the street from Coverly if you wanted to go pick it up uh, in person. Um, so Massey's carries halal food. Uh, there are a couple, uh, I don't know uh, as of now, but there are a couple of uh, restaurants there. You can just go in and ask where they get their meat from. They'll say, Amr's chicken. Um, so there's Amr's chicken and it's kind of hard not to eat halal food. Even if you go out, there is one spot um, down in the gap. Uh, there's a KFC actually uh, that had halal food there. So if you happen to be in the gap, um, there's halal food at the KFC there. Um, and then in addition to that, which I did not know of this when I was on the island, is that um, that spouses of Muslim students that come to the island will um, mm -hmm. do meal prep because a lot of students know it's hard to cook. So um, <laughs> you're busy. Uh, yeah, I'm busy. So uh, <laughs> these wonderful people, you know, prepare these foods according mm -hmm. to your dietary needs, whether it's like halal, gluten free or whatever specifications. Um, so that was really uh, helpful to have um, being Muslim on the island. Let's talk about you guys. Why Ross? Ro, why Ross? To be honest, at the time that I got the acceptance from Ross, I was considering a few different options. And I just felt like with Ross, um, anytime I would like reach out and get asked a question, I would get a very genuine and like wholehearted response back. So I truly felt like they wanted me there. And it wasn't just like a selection process. Um, but also truly, I was uh, the recipient of a scholarship, which um, also <laughs> heavily persuaded my decision. Um, it was one of the only schools that ended up giving me aid and the scholarship was um, a really great help. So that mm -hmm. was my choice. Tamar, what about you? Uh, yeah, I'll just piggyback on the scholarship uh, on the Romaid. I had received a similar offer. Um, and in addition to that, uh, when I was going through the application process, I was considering uh, Caribbean schools, but specifically the ones which I knew people that went there. And so it was actually through another sort of uh, Muslim networking event I was a part of. I met someone and uh, three years down the road, I reached out to them about, I had saw and seen that they've been going to Ross University. So I just mm -hmm. reached out to them and they were uh, super candid, uh, super open about their experience um, and the sort of support you get um, being a Muslim at Ross University. And uh, I think that was one of the major factors for me uh, deciding on Ross. Mm -hmm. that personal like, connection? Sorry, I'd like to also add something as well that I mm -hmm. now recall looking into heavily when I was applying and kind of figuring out where to go is I like that Ross had the option to choose which pace I would want to mm -hmm. complete my curriculum um, within. So they have like the X or like the accelerated track and then they mm -hmm. have the standard curriculum. And I liked that it had that versatility. So um, I like that flexibility as well. Is there anything that you wish you knew ahead of time, Ro, that you feel our future Rossies should know? 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So I think everyone kind of knows that there's this general initial stigma when you do apply to a Caribbean program. Um, and I, I thought, you know, this is, I, I did think about this heavily. Um, and at the time, prior to medical school, I used to work in clinical cancer research at actually um, one of like the top three you know, academic universities here in, in the nation. And I was working under all these like prominent cancer researchers. And actually, I recall this woman who ran our whole entire department. She's this incredible physician. And she would walk into a room and everyone would just like, just their jaws would drop because they'd be so enamored by her. And I remember having a conversation with her when I got into Ross um, and she herself was actually an international uh, medical graduate. And she told me, it's not about where you get your MD, it's actually what you do with it. Mm -hmm. So that was like some of the most valuable advice I'd ever gotten in my life. And I saw her and the position that she was in and the influence she had over people and the changes she was making in people's lives every single day and in the world of cancer mm -hmm. research. And she was an international medical graduate. And I was like, oh man, she's so phenomenal. And so that truly was something that I wish I knew before was that don't let those types of things hold you back. It's not mm -hmm. about, you know, where you get it or how you get it or how old you are when you get it. It's about what you do with it when you do get that title as a physician. Mm -hmm. And Temor, have you been there already for a few semesters? Any suggestions or advice on how to be successful in medical school for our future Rossies? few things that pop into my head are that everyone is different in the way they learn. So you're going to get tons of advice, tons of resources thrown at you, and you need to find what works for you. Um, that's one piece of advice. The second piece of advice is um, to seek out help when you need it. Um, medical school is a entirely different ballgame from undergraduate. <laughs> um, so the just amount of hours, the amount of content you're receiving, and there's great resources that Ross has, like the ATL, um, they have tutors there, there's a tutor specific for anatomy, um, there's advisors that are willing to help you one-on-one, -on -one. um, so that would be my second piece of advice, is to seek out help when you need it. Um, another thing that I don't think, uh, is mentioned enough or we've had a there's been a few talks that the wellness center has had on imposter syndrome um because you can once you start med, med, med school or even before you start med school you may feel like um do i really fit in like can i actually be a doctor i don't belong um, right yeah exactly yeah. Um, was this a mistake get, yeah. exactly they let yeah, me in what weird. happened yes. yeah <laughs> well, mm -hmm. there must have been a mistake yeah mm -hmm. in the records or something um, it's definitely going to happen. It's happened to me. Um, but you just have to, uh, you know, think about what you've done to get here and why you wanted to become a doctor. And like Ru was saying earlier, um, it's what you do with your MD um, that really defines you, not where you go to school. So... Uh, as long as you work hard and don't doubt yourself, I think uh, you'll, be, you'll be good. I agree. And I want to echo both of your messages for everyone listening. If you're given the opportunity, you run with it. You belong there. You, mm -hmm. We believe in you and you make the best of it and you become the best professional that you can. I want to thank you both for taking your time and being here. Uh, Tamar, we don't have time limits. It is what it is. We give you the time that you need to echo your voice. I'm here to give you the platform. Come back anytime. I really appreciate your time. And for everyone else listening out there thank you for joining us this week and we will see you back next week thank you thank you melina thank you for listening to ross university checking the pulse a pre-med podcast this is melina garcia your host this podcast is made for you so let me know what topics you want us to cover on future episodes you can send me your comments feedbacks and requests to mgarcia at rossu.edu definitely follow us on instagram twitter and our YouTube channel at Ross Med School or on Facebook. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I am working my way to five stars. So remember to send me your comments and let me know your ideas. If you're on Spotify, remember to click on the follow button to get our future episodes. All right, 
See you future Rossies and pre-med explorers next week. This mini podcast is edited and produced by our in-house guru, Chris King.